Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 28 through 31, where it is written, Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions in the age to come, eternal life. Many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Short and to the point, anyone who leaves behind worldly stuff for the gospel will get back even more, not to mention the eternal life and the life of the world to come. And this is opposite of what uh, the prosperity preachers preach. Oh, God give you that um, Maserati. God give you that uh, summer home or winter home in Aspen, summer home in Fort Lauderdale, and then blah, 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 blah. It's not about material stuff. Take Jesus Christ. He's the Almighty God made flesh. Almighty God made flesh. Was he rich? No. Look at the apostles. Were they rich? Paul was middle class. Everyone else was not. They're poor. And they endured all kinds of beatings and persecutions and so on. It's not about health, wealth, and comfort. It's about the kingdom of God. As people often say, when you die, can you take it with you? No. And the common saying is, the only thing you take with you is the relationships you've made with other people. The impact, the thumbprint or so you've stamped on the world through family, uh, through personal connections, the community. That's your only real legacy. Look at Jesus Christ. He was never a king, a general, but he's the most important person in the history of the world. It helps when your God made flesh. And that, uh, you know, not being in it for the materialistic, you know, not gratifying your animal desires, but actually helping people. That's what God wanted for the creation in the first place. The love. We're expressions of God's love. We're expressions, you know, God made us in his image so we could love as God loves. And we as humans screwed it up. It's called sin. We go the opposite direction. We get greedy. And we make a real mess of this world that God gifted us with. We squander it. We waste it. And so on. And unless we repent, we're going to death, eternal death, eternal hell. But God and his mercy are more. Jesus Christ, God becomes flesh. He dies for our sins. When we repent, we are forgiven. If we don't repent, God will always love us. God will never hold anything against us. And at our request, God will say very well. You will go away from me. Why don't people just repent? Certainly it's possible, but if you choose to, um, you don't reject God accidentally. Even if you knew it was the source of your suffering and the source of your damnation, people are so proud they never would sincerely repent. Why is the importance of repenting right now? You don't know, you might not get that other chance. So you repent. We're forgiven, always. When we sincerely repent, we're always sincerely forgiven. Then our life, both in this life, changes, not in terms of money, but in terms of life worth living. Yeah. You think things are getting better here in this world when we repent? Wait till the next life in eternity. The point is, are we sinners? Absolutely. Did Jesus Christ die for our sins? Absolutely. Now! day to repent. Now is the day to be saved. And when we repent, uh, we're not just saved. We're becoming part of God's plan to save the creation, to restore creation the way it was meant to be in the first place. Why wait? That money and stuff can bring you happiness? Not a chance. Repent, turn to our Lord, and be saved. Let us uh, pray. Lord, we are sinners. We are not worthy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us sinners. Forgive us and guide us always to you. Amen.